evening, I'm Sebastian Edmond. And I'm Morgan Rump. And this is Laker Connections. Tonight, Oswego Lakers hockey travels to Geneseo with the SUNYAC Championship on the line and faces Bowden in the NCAA Tournament. See if Oswego State was able to pull off the dramatic victories. And I'm Morgan Rump. Plus, two Oswego athletes share a special connection that goes beyond the court and the ice. Jeremy Long has the story. This is Laker Connections. But the puck drop is down. Earlier in the week, Oswego traveled onto the road to face a Geneseo Knights team that ended up being a contest that would determine the SUNYAC championship. We're going to take a look at the highlights right now in a very, very exciting but the puck game drop is down. that would have and a lot of way here Wilson, and would determine <laughs> quite potentially who would go to the national tournament. Let's take a look. Quick early opportunity right here by Geneseo, and opportunities would come early and often in this contest. Barely 30 seconds into the first period of action, shot, Nick Reve, Chris Carr there with the open net to bury it in the back, one nothing Oswego. Later on in the first period, Oswego is gonna find themselves on the beneficiary of a power play. Face off is one. Off to Matt Galati. He takes a shot. He rips it, and it's a goal. 2 nothing Oswego taking advantage of the extra skater. Geneseo on their own power play opportunity now. David Ripple takes the shot that bounces past Matt Zawadzki. We're in the second period of action now. Shot taken. Speaking of deflections, Josh Timpano in the right place at the right time to help Oswego double up their lead 3-1 to one on Geneseo. We have a replay for this. Let's take a look. Beautiful shot taken. Bobby Gertzakis goes to put it in front. Josh Timpano deflects it, finds its way to the back of the net. Oswego sitting relatively comfortably now and look to expand upon that. A lot of pressure by Oswego as a shot is taken and it hits the post by Botten. Rebound is taken by Reve and it's saved by Nick Horrigan. Seconds later, breakaway opportunity. Chris Carr, how you doing? Backhand. Oswego scores once more. 4-1 Laker lead. And they would continue to pile it on. Open shot taken, rebounded, and put in the back of the net. Matt Galati making it. 5-1 Oswego. That goal would prove to be enough for Geneseo as Nick Horison gets pulled. His backup, Brian Hod, takes over for the rest of this game. Geneseo looking to see how he fares. He would do a very good job, but Matt Zawadzki showing why he's the dominant Laker goalie on the ice with a beautiful glove save. Geneseo later on with the power play in the second period. Shot is taken, and it's a goal for the Knights. Narrowing the lead down to three. Tyler Brickler with that. One minute later, full strength now. Wide open opportunity. Ripple to Vitt. 5-3, still in favor of the Lakers. But Geneseo would keep knocking at the door throughout this entire game. We take the action now to the third period. On the power play. Geneseo with it. Open man. Shot taken, weird bounce. Zawadzki has to stretch and cover up that puck before it crosses over into the line. Couple seconds later though, same power play. Wraparound opportunity, the net is off, but the official signals that the goal went in before the net came off. This is very upsetting to Matt Zawadzki as he is letting the official know his thoughts and sentiments on that play. The goal will stand. Oswego's lead was at four. Now it's down to only one. And you know that this game had to be dramatic. The Knights forcing the turnover in their offensive zone. Shot taken, off the rebound. Ripple once again, putting it in the back of the net. Geneseo ties this one up. But Oswego will not go away that easy. Botten, creating his own opportunity, finds the back of the net, six to five. Botten would look for another opportunity. Pass from Galati to Carr to Botten, but he is denied by Hod. Later on, Geneseo, they themselves, they want the Suniac. Caradona, wide open, six to six. But now the dramatic ending, your call by Joe Noel and Larry Bergen. Gert Sackis, Gert Sackis. In front. That one deflected in, and the 
Lakers score! 28-7 seconds left, and the Lakers take the 7-6 lead. I don't believe what I have just witnessed. Collins gets it over that one in front. York not able to flick it. That one deflected. Ladies and gentlemen, line them up. The Oswego State Lakers are your 2014 Zodiac champions. The Wilson Arena <laughs> miracle was deflated for Geneseo. They came back so hard to beat Oswego, but they couldn't. And despite their dramatic win in the Suniac Championship game, the Oswego State Lakers weren't done as they marched into the NCAA tournament. After the game was postponed on Wednesday due to inclement weather, Oswego took the ice in their first round matchup against Bowdoin College this afternoon. Let's take a look at those highlights. With Oswego face Bowdoin in the Camp Center Ice Arena, both teams looking to start off the NCAA tournament. Starting in the second period, Oswego's Alex Botten looks to strike first, putting the Lakers up 1-0. to zero. Next we have Bowdoin's Jay Livermore manages to take a shot through the defenders, tying it at 1-1. One one. Oswego with the turnover as Bowdoin's Matt Ribanoff is running down the ice and manages to score in the third period. And now Bowden racing in between defenders as Bowden's Harry Matheson scores for the Polar Bears and puts them up 3-1. to one. After a timeout, Oswego turns up the intensity as Captain David Titanic races down the ice and puts the net, puts the puck into the back of the net. Next, we have Oswego making smart passes as Mike Montagna slots the puck past goalie Max Finkel, tying the game 3-3. Three three. Look at the beautiful goal. With a little more over two minutes remaining, Laker captain Dave Titanic weaves in and out of defenders, passing to Alex Button. Laker goal when the Lakers up 4-3, to three, as that will be the final score. And the Lakers will move on to the tournament facing Babson on Sunday. Meanwhile, the Lakers women's hockey team was also in search of a conference championship as they headed to Plattsburgh to face off against Elmira in the ECAC West semifinals. In a tough defensive battle, the third-seeded Oswego Lakers side were unable to overcome the soaring Eagles as Elmira took the win 3 to nothing to advance to the championship game. Tannis Larormu notched Elmira's first goal with 18 seconds left in the opening period and held a 1-0 lead going into the third. With Oswego on a delayed penalty, Brooke Wilgosh added Elmira's second goal and they added an empty netter to seal the victory. Oswego finishes the season with a record of 17-9-1, the best record in program history. And when we come back, WTOP's Jeremy Long takes a closer look at the special connection between Lizzie Mark and Taylor Sorrell. You're watching Laker Connections on WTOP 10. Every night before the show, me and the guys, we like to loosen up a little bit. Blue, 42, hike! Every now and then, Dan likes to take it a little too far. But hey, the show's all about competition, so we'll take it. Stupid Dan with stupid football and stupid running. Last night, Lorai Capricuzzi scored two goals on Alia Brian Love. Go, and he go, Joe, get, get out. Adam, you're in. Lori Korpakovsky scored two goals on Ilya Brzgalov. Got it! Hey guys, this is my teenage friend Fred. Rad! <laughs> hey pal, you want to pay attention to the road? Relax man, I got it. Look, my man, if your bad driving gets me killed, you better hope you die too, or I will haunt you silly. And I'm not just going to float over your bed like, woo! I'm going to be making a more annoying noise, like, ah! And instead of wearing those long, wide robes, I think I'll wear something more form-fitting and upsetting. The other ghosts will look and be like, wow, we've never seen that before.
and Waker, welcome back to Laker Connections. The Oswego men's lacrosse team traveled to Sanitary College Saturday in a non-conference game. The Lakers started off the game with a 3-0 lead from two goals from Tori Witcher and one from Nick Galapolo. Sanitary answered back with two goals, keeping the game close. Galapolo added another goal to end the first half with Oswego up 4-2. In the second half, however, Oswego notched five goals, making the final score 9-3. Oswego improves their record to 2-1 as they will travel to Greensboro College, North Carolina to take on the pride over spring break. Katie Bott, a senior on the Oswego State track and field team, has qualified for the NCAA championship in the 800-meter run. After a performance at the ECAC Championship Saturday in Boston with a time of 2.13.97, Bot will travel to the University of Nebraska March 14th and 15th to compete. A link to view the live coverage of the championship can be found on the Oswego State Athletics page. WTOP 10's very own Jeremy Long was able to sit down with Laker hockey player Lizzie Marks and basketball player Taylor Sorrell to not only talk about their friendship, but their support for each other from the court to the ice. In college, some people are happy just to get a roommate they can coexist with, but the fortunate few become true friends and support one another no matter what. Meet Lizzie Marks and Taylor Sorrell two sophomore student athletes who are roommates and one another's biggest fans. I didn't want to room with a hockey player because uh, just widen out your friendships with people. And ironic story is that uh, my dad's old roommate here coaches Taylor. So when we found that out, I guess it was meant to be. Their friendship developed pretty quickly. It began before they even came to SUNY Oswego when the two attended a U.S. women's soccer game to show love for their favorite soccer star. Early on in our freshman year, we went to the USA national game against, who was it? China? No, no. China. And uh, we <laughs> both had a love for Alex Morgan. Before long, the duo were living together and clicking immediately. They started attending one another's home sporting events whenever possible. Taylor, a guard on the women's basketball team, spent time in the Campus Center Ice Arena cheering on her favorite women's ice hockey player, number 11, Lizzie Marks. I just kind of went to one of her games and they started playing some music and I started dancing and stuff. And what was your calling? Yeah. And when I'm someone up on hits her and stuff, I get really mad. I'm coming so up on the shot I kept her. going to keep uh, an eye out, make sure no one roughs her up, because I don't want to beat anyone up if they beat her up now. Lizzie returned the favor by going to Maxiel Gymnasium in her free time to support number five, her favorite women's basketball player. And then she started coming to mine and a little cheering section at the basketball game. So, As time passed, Taylor decided cheering from behind the glass just wasn't enough. She needed to make sure that everyone could hear or read her thoughts. I brought to their first game and I just, I actually got stole hers off her desk as a little one. <laughs> and I started writing stuff on it, I don't know. Just random things that came to my mind and then they loved it and then they bought me a bigger whiteboard. Although, with dry erase markers and a whiteboard comes power. Sometimes too much power. And she wrote shut out, question mark, to Cote, which is like. No, I didn't write it at Cote, I wrote it at the other team. But still, you wrote shut out. And that's like, I don't know, in any sport, that's a number one rule to never even the, state the shutout. Even or the anything. ref went in between like the little space between the glasses and he goes, you know, that's bad luck, right? And I was like, nah, it's fine. I just got faith. <laughs> While some might find it to be a nuisance, Lizzie enjoys her roommate's presence and whiteboard from the stands. Sometimes she even gets personal shout outs. A couple of times I have to, she'll come down during warm up. So, did you? kind of distract me or make fun of me, so kind mm -hmm. of. Give you some kissy faces on the board that you never acknowledge. Number 11, I want your number, is that one, <laughs> stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Outside their times as athletes, the two have shared some special and interesting memories. And she'll like crawl over and she'll turn the light off, she'll turn it on and she'll make like a face, turn it off, turn back on again, have another one, and like I can feel her like crawling on my bed sometimes at night and it's just scary. Yeah, this is once in a while because Taylor's always hyper. When asked how to describe this unique friendship, Lizzie and Taylor were on the same page. She's my mom. She's I my went to college thinking I was going away from my mother, but I did not. I think we just have a good friendship. I mean, I've never had a younger sister. You've never had an older sister. So I think it's like that, too. Like a mother and daughter, even though the two won't be in the same place at the same time, they'll always have each other for support. I just remember that one day last year we both had really bad games. Taylor would play a sad song and then she'll stop and I'll play one back at her. It was just like one of those nights where it's just throwing candy across the room at yeah. each other. So I think each other's rock. Yeah. And like a rock, friendships are tough to break and can last a lifetime. 
Jeremy Long, right? WTOP. When we come back on Laker Connections, WTOP hockey analyst Larry Bergen is here to give us his thoughts on Oswego's big win in the NCAA tournament. Stay tuned, you're watching Laker Connections. Rob, what's up? How's, How's it going? going? Guys, this is my cousin Rob from Michigan. What's up? He's a teenager. <laughs> hey, what's totally. up? Totally. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, you want to slow down? No. Really? Huh. Hey, you know what a beautiful animal is? A horse. A horse. Yeah. Beautiful mane. Unbelievable muscle tone. When it runs, it looks like poetry in motion. It's the most beautiful thing on earth. And sometimes when you feed a horse, its lips will tickle your hand. Just, just tickle it just a little bit. It makes me giggle sometimes. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you don't slow down, I'm gonna bite into your head like an apple. And thanks guys for listening to my horse stories. I could talk about ponies all day long. The Hollywood View is back with a brand new season and a brand new look. Join me for non-stop Hollywood coverage news right here on WTOP 10 every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. And welcome back to Laker Connections. At this time, we'd like to introduce WTOP hockey analyst Larry Bergen. Larry, thank you for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to be here as always, Sebastian. I'm ready to talk about some playoff hockey. Well, that's good. great. That's what you're here for. Um, <laughs> so, last week, SUNY Oswego traveled to Geneseo for the SUNYAC championship game. The Lakers found themselves up 5-1 to one against Geneseo early in the game. But, however, they managed to blow their lead, making the game a close 6-6 six to six game, coming down to the very end of the third period. However, Oswego did manage to get that 27-second left goal, which secured them the win and the title. But how do you feel about the game and how they have to play in order to make sure that when they're up, they stay up? They got to stay consistent on the defense and on the penalty kill as well. In that Geneseo game, they were absolutely atrocious. The, uh, three of the goals that were scored by Geneseo were off the power play, and their defense was lackluster. The whole entire time, Zawatsky was standing on his head. You can argue the fact that there were some blown calls by the refs, but the fact of the matter is that there were goals called against Oswego, and there's nothing really much you can do about it except just keep on playing better. And on the penalty kill, that's what's going to be crucial in this NCAA playoffs. You move on to today's game. They hosted Bowden. They found themselves in another 3-1 hole. They managed to come away with a 4-3 victory. Your thoughts on the game today against the Polar Bears? Once again, they once again now they were on the other side. They were down by they were down by three after Bowden scored three on answer, but they were able to pick themselves back up. It was late in the game. A majority of the goal scoring was in the third period by both sides and Bowden and Oswego. But for Oswego, they didn't play throughout the whole entire game. First period was completely was completely silent for both these squads until David Titanic, he stepped up and was able to provide for the game winner as well as the momentum shift for this Oswego State Lakers team. And a lot of people were stepping up in today's game. And a lot of people in the team, we, the team just shows, shows so much diversity each game. So who impressed you in tonight's game? As I just mentioned, David Titanic was the one who impressed me the most in this game. You can make a case for Alex Bond. Once again, he he set the tone for the Oswego team. He had the game winner and he was the one that scored first for the Oswego team. But David Titanic was the one who set up the game winner for Alex Bond. This game would have possibly went into overtime for both Bowden and Oswego State. But if it wasn't for that neutral zone um, uh, interception from David Titanic, we would probably be seeing an overtime game. 
doesn't matter. It'd probably be Oswego or Bowden winning, but because of David Titanic intercepting in the neutral zone, that really set them up for the victory. So the captain, David Titanic, which he's been doing all year, keeping the team on his back and keeping them in check, he really stepped up for them. So considering the circumstances that they've faced in their last two games, they had they blew a four goal lead and then they came back from a two goal deficit and in their last eight games have all been one goal games. What do they do to avoid all of these high pressure situations? They they have to step up on defense. They have to they have to find some chemistry on their defense because Gosick has found wonderful connections, wonderful chemistry on all four lines. The second line has been impressive, the best line for the Oswego team, but he's found great chemistry for all the players on offense. Defense, however, it's a different story. Nick Reve and Bobby Gritsakis, they've been switched up a lot uh, with Steven Johnson. That first line on defense, Steven Johnson and Bobby Gritsakis, has been, uh, has been working good for them so far. But it's just the miscommunication on their end of the part, which is what leads up for opponents to score over them so quickly in this game. You can't keep on relying on your offense to provide for you if your defense, especially Zawatsky, him going into his first playoffs as a freshman, he's been really feeling the pressure. Against uh, Fredonia and Plattsburgh, he only let up three goals in those last two games. But in Fredonia, uh, excuse me, Geneseo, he let up six game, uh, goals. Today, he only faced 27 uh, seven shots and gave up three goals. So he's been a little not himself lately, so defense going to have to provide uh, to bring uh, some pressure for Zawatsky. All right, Larry, quick, one-word answer. How far does this team go? To the finals. Awesome. Well, thank you for your analysis, Larry. I appreciate you being on the show. Always when we come back, we're going to take a look at WTOP's trip to Geneseo and what goes into covering the station's first-ever road game. This is Laker Connections on TOP. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. So what sets the rundown apart from other newscasts is that it brings students together to voice their opinions on the world's most important political issues. There seems to be just more events going on in 2012 than there were in previous years combined. This nation is based on the foundation that we choose the government. Do we use one, two, and three? We work hard to bring you the most up-to-date, relevant coverage of the stories you should be following. The country has now gone over the fiscal cliff. Is gun control necessary? How much is too much? Does it surprise you that it's taken this long to have a serious talk about gun control? Students need to realize that this is the time when what's going on in Capitol Hill and around the world starts to affect them. And really, the fate of the entire country is at hand here. And this is it. Five, four, three, two, one, go camera tail. Good evening and welcome to The Rundown. I'm Megan Roberts. Welcome back to Laker Connections, I'm Morgan Rumpf. This past weekend, a WTOP crew headed out to Geneseo to cover the SUNYAC Championship game in the station's first ever road broadcast. Our very own Larry Bergen brought a camera along for the ride as WTOP 10 goes on the road. This was the way to go, we'll meet you there. You call up that. You don't have number? Baby, I think there's something about you, Emma. I haven't seen the ice arena yet, but I'm quite excited to open those doors and enter neutral territory. <laughs> um, but I think Larry will speak on my behalf that we are very excited for this broadcast. I'm feeling good. You feeling good? Yes, I am. I'm feeling so excited.
The suspense is killing me right now. We have about four hours until game time. It's snowing outside. We're getting ready to go. One for the ages, man. I mean, the best hockey game that Joe Noel and I have ever witnessed in my whole, in our whole entire lives. And I, there's no better way for me to go out of Oswego doing these hockey broadcasts for the last two years. And I fought for this for this opportunity ever since I got here. So after broadcasting four years of hockey here in Oswego, this is by far the best game I've ever been to. It's crazy. Just doing our first road broadcast ever. Um, I don't want to be that guy, but like I can say that we made history here tonight. This is what people are going to look at when, let's hope in the future, we're broadcasting nearly every road game. This was the first one, and it was Oswego winning 7-6 with 28, se 28 seconds left in a SUNYAC championship on the road. and broadcasts. Larry, thank you for showing that to us. There was no greater experience than last Saturday night. I was glad to be a part of it. Very appreciated to see the end of that. But that'll do it for us here on Laker Connections. I'm Sebastian Edmund. And I'm Morgan Rump. Have a great night and a great spring break. Stay back, Gamble. Just respond to a one Bravo response, basement of Cuba Hall. Dispatch, Civic One, in route. Hey, we're at Savac. How can we help you today? Marshall's called Weekend in Oz, but we are on a Wednesday. So yeah. What does. It's really weird. So it should be like weekday? In weekday Oz? in Oz or like. Week just night? Week night or like. Hump week, day? Hump day. Hump day. Hump day special. I like hump.